Algebra 2 CRAM, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, High Order Polynomials. Question 1, Quadratic Formula. Inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order your complete CRAM session. Question 1, Quadratic Formula. Express in simplest a plus bi form the roots of the equation x squared plus 5 is equivalent to 4x. Definitely press pause if you need to, and I'll give you a moment to think. The terms x, intercept, and roots are interchangeable. This is where an equation is equivalent to zero, or if you were to graph uh, the equation, and it would then be termed a function on an uh, x, y, Cartesian coordinate plane. This is where the x input values would yield an output value of y equals zero, hence crossing the x axis. Okay, so that's the way you can think of the roots of an equation. And since the answer must be in radical form, that is the question stem mentions, you must express the roots as complex numbers a plus bi being a format of a complex number. And this is the imaginary portion of this complex number because it contains the imaginary term i. i, in case you forgot, represents the square root of negative one, okay? So this is really good because what the question maker is letting us know is that you have to use the quadratic formula to solve this. You can't just simply factor and use the zero product property and set the x equations equivalent to zero once you separate your second order um, equation. You can't just do that. So they're literally telling you what you have to do in order to solve for the roots. The only problem that they're in is if you don't know the quadratic formula or if you're not provided with a reference sheet and it's written out. So what I recommend is that you do a few problems rather than just empty memorization because it's good to memorize, but you also have to know what to do with what you're memorizing, okay? All right, so in order to use this quadratic formula, the first thing that we have to do is rewrite, rewrite this equation in standard form, okay? And this is obviously a second order polynomial. It would look like a parabola if you were to graph it. And standard form for a second order polynomial is as such, a squared plus bx plus c is equivalent to zero. You see that the highest order term is written first, and then successive terms are you know, the next order down. So we have second order, first order, zero order, and x, okay? Alrighty then, so if we were to go ahead and put this equation in standard form, it's going to look like this. Well, yeah, the main thing is that a, the leading coefficient on the highest degree term, can't be equal to zero, else you no longer have a second order polynomial, okay? All right, so our, for our purposes, the equation we're given in the question stem, when we rearrange it and put it in standard form, we yield x squared minus 4x plus five is equivalent to zero. And the reason why this is important is because we need these coefficients and the constant c in order to execute the quadratic equation in solving for the roots, okay? So a is equivalent to one, obviously, b is equivalent to negative four, and c, our constant, is equivalent to um, five, all right? All right, so now that we have that straight, the, again, we have x. And this is the upper portion of our quadratic formula and then the denominator, okay? And again, x for a second order poly, polynomial is going to be one of two possible roots. The one of two is indicated by this plus or minus here. It might not be so obvious if you're not well rehearsed in using this quadratic formula, all right? So it's one of the two possible roots or x-intercepts of a parabola, all right? Okay, so let's just go ahead and plug in our known values. We get that x is equivalent to 
the negation of negative 4 because negative 4 is our b in this instance plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5. And this radicand underneath the radical sign has a special name. It's called the discriminant. And it can be used for a variety of purposes when we graph or are discussing the roots of a polynomial. But we'll get into that in another cram session. And this is all divided over to a. And again, a in our instance is 1. OK? All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this fraction because that's what the quadratic formula is. It's a fraction. X equals 4. When we, went, when we negate negative 4, we get 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4. So when you square negative 4, you get 16 minus um, 20 because 4 times 1 times 5 is 20. All right, that's how we wind up with a radicand of negative 4 all over 2. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and split up the two roots because remember earlier I told you that x is one of two possible roots. So we're going to get 4 over 2, that's kind of obvious, plus or minus 2i over 2. And you're probably like, OMG, what's going on? How'd you get 2i from negative 4? Well, all we had to do was factor the radicand into 4 times the square root of negative 1. And remember, the square root of negative 1 is the imaginary number or the imaginary unit in algebra and just in mathematics in general. We assign the valuable, variable, not valuable. <laughs> we assign the variable i to the square root of negative 1. All right, so when we, div when we divide 4 by 2 and 2i by 2, we're going to get 2 plus or minus 2i. So this is obviously going to be the answer. All right, so thanks for tuning in. Good luck studying. Just do your best, you know. And like in these sessions, if you don't know what's going on, just follow along, talk with me, write out the solutions in the way that I format it. And yeah, you, you'll really catch on. Like you'll definitely learn something. All right. Bye.